it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you how to make two awesome vegan recipes that would be perfect for a nice brunch. Now I don't know about you guys but when I think of brunch my mind goes straight to pancakes so I'm going to show you both a sweet and savory version of your favorite stack. First we're going to be making some vegan latkes or potato pancakes and last but not least we're going to be making some cinnamon roll pancakes with a cashew cream cheese frosting. Also this video is a collaboration with my friends Jasmine and Chris of Sweet Simple Vegan and they've come up with two other awesome brunch recipes for you guys so if you want to learn how to make some avocado french toast or a braided breakfast calzone be sure to check out their video which I will have linked in the description after you finish watching this one. Finally, don't forget, every month we have a poll, you guys get to choose the topic of our next video, so go ahead and click right up there to vote on if you want to see fall-inspired bento box lunch ideas or a vegan burger recipe. Alright, let's get to cooking! So first we're going to make our vegan potato pancakes, and for this recipe we're going to start out by making two flax eggs. But we're actually just going to mix two tablespoons of flax with five tablespoons of water because I find that when you mix it with six, sometimes it can just be a little too runny. But now we're going to move on to slicing our green onion. And traditional potato pancake recipes do use a white onion, but I like to garnish mine with green onion. So we're just going to use the more white part of the green onion for our onion part and then just garnish with the other half. So we're being multi-purpose-y. Is that even a word? I don't know. But anyways, now we're going to move on to our potatoes. I used about five small to medium sized potatoes. If you have larger potatoes, you probably want to use around three. You don't really need an exact cup measure because it's pretty standard, just go by what you think is right. But we're just going to peel all of our potatoes. And then after we've done that, we're going to grate our potatoes. And if you have a food processor, you could use the attachment in your food processor. But I know a lot of people don't, so I just wanted to show you. You can also use a grate as well. And yeah, just get in there with your potato. You want to use the larger portion of the grate because you want the potato pieces to still be distinguishable. After that, we're going to squeeze out the quote unquote juice that's in our potatoes because we want them to be as dry as possible. Then we're just going to place them in a strainer and press it all in there and as you can see you get some like pinkish brown liquid and you're just going to discard that and we're just going to let our potatoes sit for a bit while we combine our batter that's going to help them stick together so we're going to add our flax egg a tablespoon of nutritional yeast two tablespoons of flour and some salt as well as the white-ish part of those green onions like i mentioned earlier then we're just going to mix all of this together until it's pretty evenly distributed. Then we're going to add our potatoes in and they may turn a weird pink color, but it's okay. You can't even tell after you've cooked them. So you're just going to mix all of this together and then we're all ready to bake. So I put about a half of a cup of the batter onto a pan, then I flattened it out with a spatula. Then you wanna cook this side for about five minutes, flip it and then cook it for another three over medium low heat and if you do it this way you don't have to add any oil but if you do want to make your pancakes a little crispier you could add some oil or vegan butter to the pan if that's your thing and you're just going to put them on a cooling rack and cook with the rest of your batter and I would advise you if you have a pan that's big enough like this one like I'm doing here you can just cook two at one time also I did want to note that you can use any flour for this recipe. I used a gluten-free all-purpose flour blend. You could also use white flour, wheat flour, rice flour. I just wouldn't recommend oat flour because it is kind of naturally sweet. So now that we've cooked our potato pancakes, I'm going to show you how to make the cashew sour cream. And you're going to need some soaked cashews. If you don't want to soak cashews overnight, I put them in boiling water and then I let them sit for about like 20 minutes max and they turn out okay. So you're just going to add some drained soaked cashews, water, dill pickle juice, which is the secret ingredient, plus some nutritional yeast, onion powder, and garlic powder, pinch of salt, and then we're just going to blend this all together, and then this is the final product. Mine was a little bit more runny than I wanted it to be, so I modified the recipe so yours should be thicker, but I did still want it to be smooth enough where we could just drizzle it on. So now that we have our cooked pancakes, our cashew cream and the green part of our onions we are ready to assemble so you can either assemble your pancakes flat out on the plate because then you get more surface area to cover with green onions and cashew cheese and you know the toppings are like pretty important too and I decided to serve mine with some tomatoes as well but that's totally optional you could also top these with ketchup 
Or if you're feeling like a stack, you can stack them up, put some of the cashew cream on top, and then eat them this way. But that's pretty much it for this recipe. I used to eat these all the time with my family growing up, so I was really happy to recreate a vegan version. Next, we're going to be making some cinnamon roll pancakes, and I am so proud of these. So to start out, like always, we're just going to be making a flax egg. This time, we're just going to be mixing a tablespoon of flax with three tablespoons of water. Then we're going to make the quote unquote filling for our pancakes. So for this, we're just going to be mixing some maple syrup and almond butter together with some cinnamon. And then we're just going to mix all this up until it's a pretty thick paste. You do want this to be thick because it will be easier to pipe onto the pancakes as you cook them. And to do this, you can use a pastry bag. I didn't have one, so I'm just going to use a plastic bag. And you're just going to put the cinnamon mixture into the bag and you want to compress it down into only one of the corners. So keep that in mind when you're adding it to the bag. Then you're just going to seal all of the air out and really make sure that all of the batter is in that one corner of the bag. And then to turn this into a piping bag, you're just going to use some scissors to snip off the corner. Just keep in mind you wanna snip off a really, really tiny amount because it gets bigger as you cut it and you don't want your cinnamon thing to be too thick, or do you? But I'm just showing you guys here how it acts like a piping bag. You kinda just wanna twist the end and then squeeze with your fingers and it should come out pretty easily. So back to our pancakes. We're going to make some buttermilk by mixing a cup of plant-based milk with a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. This just helps to curdle it. We're just going to set that aside while we mix all of our dry ingredients. So I decided to use a mix of brown rice flour and oat flour for this recipe. As you can see, the oat flour is more coarse and the brown rice flour is more fine. And I didn't want my pancakes to be too lumpy, but if you wanted to, you could use all oat flour. What matters is that in total, you just need a cup of flour. So we're also going to add some cinnamon, baking powder, baking soda, a pinch of salt, and then we're going to mix all of this together until everything is well incorporated. I have to include that word at least once in every video. Then we're going to add the rest of our wet ingredients to our buttermilk mixture, which includes some maple syrup, some vanilla extract, and that flax egg that we had thickening. Now we're just going to give that a stir just to make sure, you know, everything's all good. Then we're going to add in our dry ingredients and we're going to mix this together until you have an even pancake batter. So now it's time to cook our pancakes. For this recipe, I used a third of a cup of batter and then I put that onto the pan. And then pretty much as soon as you pour it, you want to use the piping bag to pipe a cinnamon swirl onto the pancake. And if you mess up, it's totally okay. It's still gonna taste okay. You can actually kind of use a fork to move the swirl a little if you mess up too bad. And then you're just going to let that cook. And then again, over medium low heat if you don't wanna use any oil. And then to flip the pancake, you're just going to slide your spatula under it slowly to make sure it gets off the pan. Then you're just going to flip it and then cook it a little bit longer. I'll have the complete instructions listed in the link in the description of this video. Then you're just gonna flip the pancake back over and put it on a cooling rack. So then once you've finished cooking all of your pancakes, this recipe made six pancakes for me. You can eat them as is or top them with some maple syrup, but I'm going to show you how to make our cashew cream cheese frosting. So again, in a blender, we're going to add half of a cup of soaked cashews with some maple syrup, a little bit of nutritional yeast just to give it some cheesy flavor, a pinch of salt and some water. Then we're just going to blend this all up and again, you have a pretty thin, spreadable, drizzly cashew icing, as I like to call it, because what's a cinnamon roll without icing, guys? I mean, let's be real here. So after this, we're ready to assemble our pancakes. You can just put a drizzled icing on top. You could top them with more maple syrup if you wanted to, uh, but yeah, you're ready to eat. These are amazing. I hope you guys try them. And that is it for our vegan pancake recipes. Let me know in the comments below if you like savory or sweet food for brunch more and which one of these recipes you want to make first. I think it's kind of strange, but when I make breakfast or brunch for myself at home, I always crave sweet foods and I never want savory foods, but every time I go out to eat, I tend to order the savory options. So I don't know if I'm the only one who does that. Am I just weird? I don't know. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post two new videos every single week. And other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever time of day it is for you. Talk to you soon. Bye.